Hey everyone, I've been having some requests to um, kind of show uh, what it looks like to play with the Geomorph cards and the D100 Dungeon World Builder sets. And uh, so I thought I would put a little video together kind of showing what I do and um, uh, what that looks like. So there has been some license that I've been taking. So just so you know, with this, so it's not 100% um, the rules. And I think you have to kind of tweak games like this uh, to uh, kind of work work it out how you want to play, right? So um, I just want there to be a smooth order of things in terms of um, the World Builder book, and um, I want for things to make sense. So I've kind of combined um, the overview and the game flow with Geomorph cards um, along with what's happening in World Builder. So let me just explain what's happening. The majority of what we do with the travel is going to take place around this calendar. So every day you're going to be marking off a, um, uh, a day here, right? So you mark it off and then you follow whatever instructions are on here. Um, there's a key right in here in terms of um, what those symbols mean up on top. And um, so, um, you know, the skeleton um, guy here, you're checking for poison and um, did you get infected on your journey? Um, a religious day, so you're going to be rolling for an event there. Um, there's a satanic day here, so you're going to be rolling. And it's like plus 10, minus 10 in terms of the events that happen um, to you there. Full moon, you're going to be encountering possibly a werewolf. So um, so you're taking into that consideration um, those things there. So um, this is the primary um, thing that I'm keeping track of as I'm moving through the land. And um, so you do get some events there. And I like the idea that you're not going to be having an event on every single turn that you're moving through the land, right? Um, one of the things too that World Builder does is it charges you uh, one day. So these are um, um, action points. And so riding is one action point. So if you're gonna ride, um, you would be marking off one um, square there on the calendar, right? Um, over here, let's see, um, forage. Um, Forage is one um, day times three, and um, and you're harvesting different things. So I, I do still like the tests for harvesting, trapping, and hunting. Um, and uh, scouting takes two, resting two. So resting is the only thing that I feel like should be a free action. So I don't charge myself any day or calendar time um, for that. Um, if I want to scout, forage, or do some fishing, um, that kind of stuff, then, um, you know, I'll keep uh, a pip of time out um, that is allowed through the Geomorph cards to do that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I like to just um, travel through, see if I um, encounter things, um, and then um, experience um, the towns and the roads and see what's happening in the land. So um, it's really um, quite simple. So um, with the Geomorph cards, you are giving um, some time, and turn this over to the right page here, um, and um, the um, the time is three, you actually get three time units per day, right? So you could move through three grassland squares in a day. Um, and um, so what does that look like over here? So you're moving, or three road pieces, right? So you're moving from here, one, two, three, like that. So you could move that in one day, and then you would rest. Right, and um, then I would take a look at the calendar, and if there was an event, um, so that would be one day I would just cross it off, and then I'd be resting. If I felt like I needed to forage or um, set up a, a camp, that kind of thing, then I can do that um, as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of go through um, each day um, here until I get to an event or some kind of a test that I have to, to roll, and that's really um, it. Now, one of the things that, um, the Geomorph cards doesn't really explain is um, how that movement is affected by mounts, right? Um, it does talk about um, using a ship and you can use a ship in some of the water um, tiles like up here. And, um, and so those um, things, you know, I guess I would have to look at um, what it would be to sort of build a boat or buy a boat, that kind of thing, or to charter passage to get to this middle island and go explore that area up there. And um, so in looking at mounts, World Builder does discuss um, mounts in here. And so um, I was fortunate enough 
after my two first training quests to have enough money to um, check and see what kind of mounts would be available and manage to buy a dire wolf. Um, and um, as far as I can tell, the different mounts don't really uh, do that much um, in terms of um, travel time and or um, um, other sort of stats poke. So I might have to look into that a little bit better and see what that's all about. But I made some um, notes here about how I feel the travel should be affected. So in the normal Geomorph card um, travel piece, um, I'm taking this to mean by foot, right? So if you're on uh, walking and um, you're trying to go through grassland, it's going to be one time. If you're walking through ruins, it's going to take three times. It's going to take you a whole day just to get through um, that, right? Um, and so my thought for having a mount was to double it. And so um, allowing six time if you're riding and then um, four time if you have a failure with the ride test. So what that means is that um, in D100 Dungeon, one of the things uh, in the World Builder book here, one of the things that I wasn't quite um, sort of aligned with in the thinking is uh, how the riding test goes. So according to your character sheet, and my current um, beefed up dex is 40, um, you take your dexterity and then based on the terrain that you're in, you are going to apply a um, uh, number here. Um, so for instance, if I'm riding through the mountains, it's minus 20. So with this, I would um, roll the D100 and, um, and on a 20 or less, uh, I would succeed in riding in the mountains. And so 80% of the time, um, according to the D100 book, I'm gonna fall off and take D1 to three points of damage 80% um, of the time. So it just seemed uh, like a little much for me. So what I've done is um, sort of augmented that with a base value to ride. So I feel like 30 is a good base value point uh, to, to uh, do the riding test. And so each day, um, depending on the terrain that I'm moving into, um, I would um, do the test still, right? So I take the 30 for the base ride, add my 40, um, so that's 70, and then subtract the, um, uh, the riding penalty, right? So if I'm in the hills, minus five. Um, and uh, so what is that? 65% uh, of the time, then I would be um, uh, having a success. And so I feel like that is more um, conducive to the world builder traveling piece. But uh, so that's, that's kind of it. It's kind of in a nutshell right there, you know, um, as you're going through all of the towns, all the actions are here. So I still do all of these things here and um, the uh, leaving a dungeon and the town um, um, actions that you can take and the things that you can do. Um, the events are awesome in world builder. So I love rolling on those. Um, but you know, it's not, um, it's not every day that you're going to have some kind of an event. So you're just kind of really working through the calendar and then I'm moving through the terrain pieces and really it is all about, um, just trying to get from point A to point B. Now, one of the things that, um, I did, um, also put together for the Geomorph cards is, um, these tokens here. So, um, these tokens are for, uh, the dragon armor. Um, expansion and they're available on the, the token sheet is actually available on um, Martin Knight's website and um, to keep track of the different um, dungeon tiles and what's happening there and you can write little notes so I've dry erased on here um, so that I can write little notes so as an example um, I just came out of this dungeon that I was in here for quest number three um, there's a town right here it's called Blue Ash it's actually a city focused a little better uh, and at any rate um, I haven't been there yet um, so I could go there and experience that and kind of recoup etc um, and then um, try to make my way back this is my home card in a city of fish lily and um, there's a side quest located at 5-4 so um, down here in the corner and um, already went through that which was really cool um, but so for me, I'm liking to use the um, traveling piece as sort of a grounding um, element in the game, right? So I, I go back to my uh, home city and then I get the next quest, right? And so right now I'm working through all the training quests. I just completed number three. So I have to make my way back to what I like to call the training master and uh, 
uh, and then he will uh, take the pieces that I've gathered. I had to get three pieces of armor for quest three, and um, uh, now we're gonna go back, turn those in, and get uh, quest number four. And then quest number four is located down in here. So um, then we'll make our way back there. Um, quest number five is up here, and training quest five. I did hear a rumor about um, quest nine up in this um, area down in here. And um, one of the other things that I did is I've gone ahead and put uh, together the whole map. Um, according to the World Builder set, um, you're, uh, you have an, a, a dice in the corner right up here, right? And so based on that, you can count one, two, three, so a forest. Um, if I was going on this way, this could have been a forest um, tile like that, right? Um, or it could be a grassland. So, um, and that's kind of how I just kind of built it out there. And, um, you know, this started with um, hills and um, in pulling the next hills, it turned into this card, etc. And so um, I just wanted to create a map that looked interesting. And, um, you know, I put it together uh, loosely <laughs> on, uh, on how that worked with Geomorph cards. So that's, that's it. So this is kind of the rundown basically a little bit. And um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like then, put it all together um, in a play. Alrighty then, so um, I just came out of the dungeon and um, successful romp there. One of the things about this particular one, it was really smooth. Um, I think it was only maybe six, seven uh, tiles uh, deep um, before I was able to find all of the necessary quest items that I uh, was looking for. Um, and um, now I'm coming out, but uh, I didn't really find a whole lot there. I did find the two spells. Um, and um, so my thought is that I've worked through um, about half of my rations. Um, you know, I've had some um, injuries, so some damage and fatigue from being in the dungeon. So there's a town right here of Blue Ash. So I'm gonna make my journey here. And according to the movement um, guide, it's going to take three um, time units to get there if I just walk my mount. And um, then I'll be able to rest up, do a town action. Um, sell some spells and heal up. So let's take a look. So I'm just going to do that. So the first uh, movement is going into here. And so it took me a whole day to get there. So I'm gonna cross a day off on my calendar um, right there. So no events, everything's smooth. Um, I've uh, made it to the town. So now I'm going to sell my scrolls, or not scrolls, spells rather. And so I get 800 gold pieces per. So I've got 1600 uh, and then I'm going to um, buy some more rations. So that's going to fill up my rations um, pit from the uh, from the calendar. Uh, so I have full 30 rations. Again, I'm going to go ahead and spend another day at the town. And uh, so there is um, that uh, there. And um, I'm not going to really venture out or do anything because I'm just trying to make it back to the um, training master guru for the training quests. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so there's that. All right, so I spent uh, two days there recouping, refreshing, um, and uh, so removed the fatigue that I had and um, healed up completely, um, subtracting the gold pieces for that. And um, all right, so now we're ready to move again. So uh, now I'm going to move. So I need to plan my um, egress out of here. Um, I came this way previously. And uh, so it looks like that's probably the easiest way. This uh, desertous land is a bit of a minefield out here in terms of travel. It can take forever. These are dunes and it takes a whole day just to go through one square there. So um, let's go. So we're going to do the uh, writing test. And um, where's my book? It's, oh, here it is. All right. So going through the wasteland, which are these cracky looking squares here, is one pip. But here, let's first, we're getting on the dire wolf to make the ride. And going through, uh, da, 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 we're going to call that uh, Tundras, right? So basically, there's no um, there's no penalty for riding through that. So base riding of 30 
plus my dexterity of 40, so I have a 70% chance there. Um, I also have the writing skill, uh, which is going to give me uh, five, so 75% chance to ride. Let's take a look, 28, so we did it. And so we um, have garnered now six movement points. So we've got one, two, and um, getting up on the Rocky Plateau um, takes two time units. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there is the first day we've made it to there. And we're going to shade a pip on the calendar. There is nothing happening there. So we're gonna rest up and um, head out for the next day. So we're gonna ride again. 38, all right, so going through the dunes, um, we are going here and going into dunes, it uh, takes three time units, uh, but we had successful, so we get um, three more time units there. Um, and then the mountain, um, it takes uh, three, so I can move here. That is another day, so you check that out. Um, and there is no event there, and all is well. Um, all right, here we go. Um, the next day we've rested, breaking camp. Um, 60. All right, so 60, and um, so the base ride of 70. Um, and we're going into the grasslands, so basically zero um, there. So moving through these lands here, my writing percentage was low enough that I didn't really need to take a look at the writing penalty because I was um, I had already achieved the role. So at any rate, um, we are uh, successful in writing again. So we get six movement points. So we got one, two, moving into a forest is two, three, four, five, six um, is the movement, okay? Um, and then we mark off a day on our calendar, Ooh, um, moving through the forest here. So rested, breaking up camp, going through the next day. Um, all right, and 38. So moving through the forest is minus 15. Um, so 75 is my base ride, minus 15, I'm in there. Um, so I get six movement points again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I'm almost to the road um, right there. Okay, um, now we mark off a um, hit. Oh, this is an event. Okay, so now we've moved through, if I can show you here, um, right here where there's a little skeleton. So I just marked that off right there. So now I need to make a um, disease poison check and um, I'm assuming, uh, and this, and all the rules say in the World Builder book is that you um, make this check versus, um, you know, based off of the, the rules from the main book. And, um, you know, those rules seem to indicate that a monster needs to be present when you're getting disease and or um, uh, poison. So uh, I'm gonna roll the D10 and on a one, um, I'm gonna be affected. Um, no, so um, we're fine. So we uh, got through that just fine. Um, we're gonna rest on the edge of the road before we head out the next day. And here we go. Um, so, all right, so 17. And um, we're moving on to a road, which is zero percentage chance to fall off the mount. And we're gonna go uh, one, to, and we're just gonna go through this town and because we're trying to make it over here officially. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and I can't move into the forest because it, it uh, would take two movement um, units there and cross off another day. And by the way, we have been um, out for uh, one, two, three, four, five days and we have used um, two rations per day, one for me and one for my mount, so that's 10, right? 10 rations that we've gone through. Um, so also keeping track of that on the World Builder calendar. All right, so we're gonna make camp here and um, 
that's it. So now we are going to um, attempt to ride them out again. Um, all right, five, ooh, five. That means I get to um, shade in a pip for my dexterity um, since I was doing a test and um, using the riding skill. Um, cool, so progression in skills is always fun. Um, and then this, okay, so we succeeded there um, and ooh, we're gonna have a religious event day. So we're gonna go ahead and move and then we're gonna do the event. So we got one, two, three, four, and moving in tittles um, is um, two units. So we didn't one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well now we're gonna go into the world book and roll on the event. So we have one event that we've shaded now. Um, we're into February, and we're going to uh, roll on the event, WB, -E, right, for events, all right, perfect, um, here we go, let's see what happens, all right, uh, 97, oh, I don't like the look of that, and we're in the hills, so hills 97, um, oh my god, there's a plague, so let's read. <laughs> Let's read about that. Talk about not getting sick, etc. Um, okay. Uh, okay. The plague is upon us. Interesting how games mirror what's happening in real life. And um, Uh, plague. Plague has broken out in the adventurer's current hex. Mark the hex with plague and circle the calendar one to three months in the future. Um, then on the reverse of the calendar, make the following date replace terrain name in plague hex. So what, was, what does this say? 1D3. Mark the hex plague and circle the calendar one to three months in the future. Um, all right, so three months, so we're in February, so we're going to be um, March, April, May 1st, Let me circle that day, and okay, so um, terrain name, okay, and so that would be here, uh, and that's going to be hex 2-5, plague 2-5, and that hex um, right there. And what does it say about it? The adventurer also suffers in a minor way from the plague and the player must shade one to few pips on the adventure's disease track and also an a P. Okay, so now um, I've got plague. Oh, well, that's it, right? So um, on those days with the skeleton, if you have plague or disease, that's when you make um, the, the roll again, right? Um, or advance it. So um, now, I'm adding plague to my character sheet. Um, yikes. And, um, <laughs> all right. So, um, okay. So, um, plague trap is 1d3 pips. So, 1d3 pips. Plague. Three. Oh, three. Nice. Um, so. That is awesome. How fun is that? All right, so here we go. And that's gonna be expensive to cure. <laughs> and, uh, okay. If the adventurer is unable to remove the plague disease pips before visiting the settlement, there's a 25% chance at a village, um, town, that they will pass on the plague and infect the entire heck. The player rolls the D100 if the result is equal to or less than the chance shown, the entire hex becomes plague hex. Um, okay, yikes. Each time a plague hex is moved into, the adventure immediately suffers one to three of more plague. In addition, all settlements um, actions are taken while some plague hex. The player uses the next 
level of settlement down. Oh, yikes. Okay, so that is not fun. Um, but here we go, and we're almost officially. So um, we can go there and hopefully get cured um, of the plague. Let's see what it says about that. Um, uh, heal, all right, yeah. So um, 65 gold pieces, um, a pit, and uh, okay. So um, let's go. So we're gonna move on now. So we've uh, taken that event. We've moved through our calendar, and now we're going to move. It looks like we can make this ride attempt one more time to get to Fish Lily, hopefully. And, um, ooh, 73. Where are we going? We're moving into a Grass Hex, so there's no penalty for it. And um, I need a 75, so we're good. One, two, three, okay. So we've made it back to Fish Lily. This is it. I'm gonna pay my gold for the travel, uh, and or for the um, for the plague to get healed from the plague, I'm going to um, sell the items, go visit the uh, quest taskmaster, and um, that is it. So I'm going to gear up for the next event, get cured, and then make the travel on over here to uh, training quest number four. So that is it. That's kind of what it looks like there. If you have any questions, please post them down in the bottom. And I um, hope you enjoyed watching that.